Hey everybody, welcome to episode 27 of Between Two Couches and this is the filthy episode because we're going to talk about the filthy, ones, uh, filthy 150 that turned uh, happened a few weeks ago. Sorry, I stumbled there because Derek was shaking his head at me for calling it the filthy episode. But, you know, it's, click, it's clickbait. Yes. It's clickbait. So, Sam, um, we're going to talk about the filthy 150. I, I got out there in the afternoon. I got to say it was pretty cool being out there in the Dublin Weston. Mm. You know, it actually worked well. It was a big air, air, airport hangar. So all the small planes, the Cessnas and all whatnot were outside and it was just completely cleared out. I was kind of expecting Iron Man and the war machine to fly in at any one point. And yes, dock. just from ACDC. Yeah, yeah. That, would have been, that would have been pretty cool. But they had good events. You and missed it. Oh, no, sorry. Iron Man was present at the field. <laughs> <two movies. laughs> this podcast is cancelled. <laughs> um, so we, we team CFI and this year we said, right, just make it all about the athletes, none of, none of the coaching staff on that. So you yeah. got booted off the team, but yes. you were in charge of the team. So yes. first of all, what was your selection criteria for mm. Unfilty 150 2018? Unfilty 150. So the selection kind of was based off, well, every August we repeat the open workouts from the same year. So we did... 18-1 all the way to 18-5 in the same week, which is a, a challenge in itself. Yes. But also an extra bit of pressure, I guess, if you wanted to make the team, because we say the highest performing athletes of the top two males, top two females, are going to represent our gym. And that's what we did. So it ended up being Edwin and Cronin and Siobhan and Aga. So they, uh, they also, it wasn't even just uh, them doing the best, they also improved their scores from uh, the actual Open. So it was, most, it was almost like most improved and then highest performance. Okay, that's yeah. good. And why did, we, why did we go with the Open instead of like doing a one day trial? Because it's five tests designed by CrossFit HQ <laughs> over the most broad range of te physical tests you could think of. Um, like that's, that's the international standard that everyone goes for the cross it open so why not use it uh, for our own purpose because it's it is it is the gold standard of what you should be aiming for so profit from dave castro's hard work mm, indeed <laughs> okay so you selected the team and then they were in most sundays during open gym which you then turned into a little bit of team training so yeah what were the challenges the highs the lows during during the team training for a couple of weeks team training um organization of what to do was my main job I think in the team training now everyone on the team was super enthusiastic to train and want to do this and they all had their own ideas they had their own whatsapp group to do stuff but then when they show up on a Sunday they'd be like oh yeah we should uh, probably do some stuff and it'd be 11 o'clock already and no one's getting anywhere so I stepped in kind of and went okay this week you're all going to do this huge chipper and then you're going to try one of the filthy workouts whilst out of breath or um I remember one week we set up the boxes for the sandbag jump and i was kind of going through what's the most efficient way to get over the box like put the ball on the side go face the ball and go over as opposed to any other way because it will just slow you down um, i tried to replicate the concept two bike with an assault bike just going just legs as fast as you could and um, that kind of stuff so we kind of played it by ear leading into before we knew any of the workouts i guess most of the team training was kind of based off the monster mash kind of stuff and um, just getting used to back to back workouts as opposed to one max effort workout and you're done like because on a competition day you're gonna have to recover and go again so yeah. getting used to that kind of uh, performance which is a big thing you know give mm. your best effort try and recover and go again exactly so yeah. shout out to Sherwood for the monster match thanks mm. Pat call him good Pat, man, good like, man, Pat. yeah like, like we know him like but, our know, bud. yeah <laughs> I'd go for a beer with Pat Sherwood I'd certainly yeah. have a few points with the Sherwood crack open a few Steve Weisers yeah, yeah. that'd be good <laughs> and um, any, any sort of like notable improvements in, in teamwork or growth during the training? Yeah, actually, um, you could definitely see, again, from doing the, you know, everyone knew their strengths. So when it comes to, again, going back to the, uh, the gymnastics piece into the Concept2 bike, into the sandbag, yeah. everyone, we very quickly, and everyone was very honest with each other in the group about 
what part they'd be able to do what's best for the team. Like no one said, oh, I want to do the bar muscle-ups because they're the coolest. No, we said, okay, what's, who's fastest at this many chest bars? And then, okay, who's fastest at the toast bar? Are your toast bar faster than your chest bar? You know, like, we worked out very mathematically and everyone was humble enough to just accept their place on the team. Not accept the place in a bad way, but like, want to be on the team and know their role for their best position. You know, no, no, another role, <laughs> and they damn well shut their mouth. <laughs> Brilliant. There is a lot of WWE Attitude Era references in this um, in this podcast. If you want, we can send you on a playlist for some educational purposes. Yes. But uh, I really noticed when I got there. So I was coaching here in the morning. So um, it, it's funny, like the team that you know, they're all good people. They all bring a good buzz to Saturday mornings. I've kind of noticed it was a bit quiet. Um, mm. Shout out to Orla in particular, who like you know, sprinted off the gym floor to get changed into all CFI gear to sprint <laughs> out there to support them, you know, like, so yeah. that's, that's cool that people would give up their Saturday to, to go out and support them. When yeah, I get out definitely. there, um, I got, or Edwin were midway through their sandbags over and like they were, again, cheering each other on, lots of shouting, lots of banter. Um, mm. Gabby was principal photographer for the day. Yes. Um, and that was cool to see them that really pushed themselves and then just like, I don't think I heard them mention the score once from the, from the afternoon there. there no, like, I don't think that was the aim for anyone. Yeah, did you I, do your best? Yeah, yeah, I think it was enjoy the day, enjoy the experience, yeah. and get really out of breath as hard as you can. Yeah. Give your max effort and have fun. Absolutely. And I think that was achieved. Maximum overdrive. Maximum overdrive. Yeah. yeah. And that was, that was really cool because that's what they did. You know, and, you know, we've talked about you can't uh, dictate placings. Yeah, exactly. So speaking of placings, yeah, how did you do, Sam? We came second, so I was uh, very proud to be asked to be on a team with uh, Petey Savage and uh, Kirsty Oliver and Charlie Wells, who are two girls from England. Um, so a Petey kind of organised the whole thing. But I was very, I was chuffed to be asked to be on a kind of high level team. Yeah. So um, and I'd never really, I'd never done a competition with Petey, and I'd never met the two girls before, but. We actually worked really well as a team. Uh, an example would be uh, the worm workout. We ended up smashing the worm workout. And it was a workout where everything was synchronized. Worm, you have to work together. It was all teamwork. There was no individual heroes in that workout. So um, I was quite happy that we did well in that one as a kind of team, uh, even though we hadn't really met each other previously. So And... and if you look behind, you can see there's two spikes on the Concept 2 skier for second <laughs> place. But again, you can't dictate how good other no. teams are going to be. I know I was really happy that we even came second place. You know, yeah. because we, again, I had a great day and I really pushed myself hard. Um, uh, I was going to say, uh, pity there wasn't a final. Um, but at the time of the, the final, there was no there was no points difference that could possibly have changed the final score. So, um, still always would like to go out and win the final. You know, yeah. you always want to win the workout. Absolutely. <laughs> and a competition, you know, so. Yeah, uh, that's, like, like, that's a, a, minor, a minor smudge and an otherwise, otherwise excellent. Like, excellent event. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was great to see Army there as well. Oh. You know, rumor is Army's running scared for my boy Sam here. <laughs> You hear that, Army? <laughs> Call it out. We we'll tag him in the video. Oh, well, we'll totally tag him. We will share and tag this as well. And then we have to say, just for uh, shits and giggles, where did your team place compared to former games champion Sam Briggs's team? Oh, a whole placing ahead. <laughs> oh, so that's pretty good. Oh, that's embarrassing for Team Reebok, isn't it? Mm, team Reebok. <laughs> that was embarrassing to begin with. What was your team? Uh, uh, team Hydra Mate or okay. Hydra Hydrate Mate. I'm dyslexic, I can't remember okay. the exact details. Right. But they're a water bottle company where you can buy water bottles. <laughs> I don't know, something. And that's yeah. proof that Sam will bow down to literally any sponsor. I will be your bitch for, <laughs> for free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we, this is now the world's most famous ski erg. Uh, it's been all over my Instagram for days. Um, it's been on Crossfire and Instagram. It's now the most famous piece of equipment in yeah. the gym's history. Uh, so... I'm proud of that we acquired it in such a cool way, yeah. which and is awesome. We would like your help naming the skier. <laughs> yes. Maybe it should be called Ski McSkierton or something like that. Yes. But if you guys can think of a better name, we'd love to hear Please it. Please phone in. 
Okay. Um, final shout outs. Uh, we Dave came say to the end of the day, Cronin. Cassie was working at it. Yes. And she showed up to support again. Gabby. Danny. Danny. Sean Byrne. John, Ruth. Don't want to miss anyone. Oh. It was nice for me. My par- it was the first time my parents had come and seen me do CrossFit in the flesh. So that was kind of cool. What up, Mr. and Mrs. Stewart? Yeah, represent Paul. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, yeah. guys. No, it was great to see. And again, like, uh, I'm always really, really proud of the cheering section of CFI because people just, Probably, you yeah. know, just give up their Saturdays to come out and cheer. And, and it's a distance away. It's a, tr- it's a journey. It's a day out. It's a whole day. Yeah. You know? There's a distance. You're watching people for 20 minutes, clambering among crowds to see things, and then you see the event. So. That's always very, very cool. Um, special thanks to Jamie and Darina for yeah, fair play absolutely. because they started the Filter 150 as a very, very small event with 150 athletes. Mm. And I think there's over it. 200 teams this time. So there you go. Like from 150 so, athletes total to 200 teams is pretty impressive. And, you know, uh, Doreen has really driven, driven a lot of work in terms of getting sponsorships and mm. making it a big premier event that people want to go to yeah. as well. I can only imagine the logistical nightmare of trying to run that. I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, so much love and props to them, guys. Yeah, absolutely. I think that about think wraps it, it up, yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks to Derek, behind the scenes. Um, he is more attractive behind the camera than you guys can possibly imagine. Mm. <laughs> yes. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>